Hey, what's up? It's Bad Mad, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for being here. If you're new, my name is Madeline, aka Bad Mad. I am a photographer, videographer, makeup artist, actress, health and fitness fanatic, and now certified permanent makeup artist. And I am here on YouTube creating a network of baddies, basically positive, uplifting women. And if that sounds like you, I want you a part of the baddie squad today. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit the thumbs up, and hey. hi. <laughs> Hi, honey. I love, I love you. Side note, try the brown sugar oat milk latte from Starbucks. It is so good. Today's video, I have been so excited to film. I am spilling the tea on microblading. So as I mentioned before, I'm a certified permanent makeup artist. I got my certification in 2020 and I do powder brows, lip blush, and permanent eyeliner. I specialize in those three areas. Now, most of the time when people hear, oh, you got your brows done, or oh, I'm thinking about getting my brows done, they immediately think of microblading because it's been around for so long, it's popular everywhere, but should it be? I am here to spill all of the tea on the difference between microblading and powder brows. The differences may surprise you. I honestly talk about this multiple times a day when I'm at the salon tattooing because everybody knows microblading. So I really wanted to educate you baddies on the difference so that you can make an educated decision if you are thinking about getting your brows done. There is a lot of tea to spill, so let's go ahead and get right into it. If you'd like to know the difference between powder and microblading and which is better, continue watching. <laughs> Okay, so let's talk brows. Brows have quickly become like the most important thing in the beauty world. Brows have become so important. People are obsessed with their brows. People are insecure about their brows. It's just all of this attention has all of a sudden gravitated towards brows. Now I will say as a makeup artist, I've been a commercial makeup artist for about eight years and a permanent makeup artist for the last year. Brows do frame the face, so they are very important. If you think of your face as being a canvas, you know, before you go in and apply makeup, your brows, I mean, if you think about it, it's really bizarre, it's hair on your face that provides structure for the eyes. If your brows are wonky or not what they should be, it will throw the entire canvas off. So I understand the obsession with brows. Now back in the 90s, the trend was to go super thin. Ah! Drop a comment below if you were one of those people that plucked their eyebrows like crazy. I see that a ton with my clients and they're like, yeah, I, I was one of those pluckers. So I get this all the time. But basically that can be remedied. Now with the latest and greatest technology and techniques in the beauty industry, brows can be fixed. Now that I am a brow artist, I do notice the average person's eyebrows, especially with masks. I feel like that's now the first thing or one of the first things that I notice. I think I notice people's eyes first and then brows are close second. But noticing people's brows, a lot of people get lost with brows and it makes total sense. It's hard to know where each point should be landing. It's hard to know what color you should be using, the technique you should be using. They're very hard to master. So I always say, allow a master to do them then so that you do not have to worry about that. Honestly, every woman could benefit from it and can benefit from it. So I definitely recommend getting your brows done. Now here's the thing. There are two techniques on the market that are drastically different. So let's break them down. Microblading versus powder brows. Microblading has been around for years and years and it's the first thing people think of. It's supposed to be notoriously more natural because basically the technique is to mimic hair strokes on the skin. So for people that are lacking hair, you know, they hear, oh my gosh, hair strokes, and they think it's going to look so natural and beautiful and all of that. Now there are amazing microblading artists out there, so no shade to them whatsoever, but there are some things that happen with microblading that we'll get into. Microblading is mimicking hair strokes. Powder brow, on the other hand, is what my brows look like. It basically looks like a consistent powder makeup, and that's why they're called powder brows. Now, a lot of people think, oh my gosh, 
powder makeup, I don't want that on 24 seven. So I always say this to my clients and I think it kind of, it resonates. Basically, when you look at someone's eyebrows, you look at her and you think to yourself, wow, like her brows look great. You're not sitting there thinking to yourself, wow, those are really nice hair strokes, or wow, that looks like really good makeup. You just think to yourself, wow, she has really great brows. So honestly, that's what I tell people to kind of debunk that whole microblading looks more natural. To me personally, as a makeup artist, I think powder looks more natural because it makes your eyebrow look completely consistent. We do a fantastic shape. We map you, we color match you, all of those things. I always tell my clients, I like to think of our work together as a collaboration. It's not just me as the expert saying, this is how it should be, this is how we're doing it. I advise them, obviously, Obviously on shape, width, color, all of that, but I like to stay within their comfort zone as well. Because at the end of the day, me as an artist, I can make all the recommendations in the world, but you're the one that is wearing them around for three plus years. So how is each technique done? Microblading takes a five to six bladed tool, a razor blade, scratches the surface layer of the skin to mimic hair strokes and deposits pigment into the cuts. From what I've heard from my clients, it is excruciating. I've had women say that they've cried during it, that they didn't know if they were gonna be able to get through it, and they numb you for this procedure. But a lot of times, microblading artists will go deeper than the surface layer and actually can cause scarring to the skin. If the microblading artist has not done the proper education on technique, they can push that tool in too deep and it can cause serious repercussions. Powder, on the other hand, uses a machine very similar to a tattoo gun. It's a cosmetic tattooing machine. It's a single needle. This needle goes vertically into the first layer of your skin. numb you before each one and let me tell you I do a ton of microblading cover-ups so basically clients that have had microblading previously want it covered up get the powder done and they say it is a night and day difference they say with the powder that it's nothing they're like oh this is nothing I mean I've had people who have had microblading before that were scared to come in to even get the powder because they were like it was a horrible experience. It hurt so bad. I never wanted to experience that again. And then we zip through the powder brows and they're like, oh my gosh, that was nothing. Let's go over how long each technique lasts because this is a major difference. Microblading is advertised for lasting, you know, two years. You won't have to touch your brows. False, and I see this firsthand. Microblading looks good for the first several months. When a person first gets them done, it's like, oh my gosh, girl, your brows look amazing, da da da. But give it six to eight months and they will be singing a different tune. Because it's individual hair strokes, those strokes over time blow out. And I'm going to drop some pictures. You can see in this video, the microblading. This is old microblading. It has turned red. A lot of times it will turn red, gray, or both. Half your brow will be red, half your brow will be gray. And this, I mean, this is an actual person that came into me to get a cover up with powder. So this is not just random, I'm just saying this. This is what I see on a daily basis in the salon. The color goes red. The strokes blow out so that it almost just looks like a big gray or red blob. I mean, it's bad, you guys. This isn't like a one-time thing. This happens all the time. When people say that they got microbladed, it makes me cringe. On top, you'll have old microblading. Bottom is the powder cover-up. So, honestly, I've had a ton of clients come in and get this done that have had previous microblading, and like I said, they love powder so much more. Typically, if you wanted to keep going with the microblading, you would need to touch up every six months 
to prevent it from going red or gray. But eventually I feel like that's pretty much inevitable because it's just the way the skin takes that pigment. Powder, on the other hand, I'm gonna drop some examples of powder over here. This is all powder work that I have done. Powder will last up to three years. I get a lot of questions about, you know, do I do a touch up? How does that work? So you have the option to do an annual touch up if you're one of those people that likes a very sharp brow, you want your color pop in. If you like a little bit more of a natural look, you know, two years you could get the touch up. We advise getting a touch up before the three year mark just because after three years, this pigment simply disappears from the skin. So you kind of have to start from square one if you get to the point where it's completely disappeared. Powder is considered a semi-permanent tattoo. You know, people think tattooed brows, oh my gosh, it's not going to last. 20 years, it's just every few years you would then get a touch up to keep a pigment looking fresh. One other major difference between the two is the aftercare. So for microblading, you can't get them wet for, I believe it's a week, really can't work out. Like it's very mission critical to not get them wet or anything like that. It makes sense because it's the surface layer of your skin. The surface layer of your skin is not very durable. With powder brows, you can shower that night, you can work out the next day. The only thing that we ask is with working out, if you're gonna work out the next day or within 24 hours, to wear a sweatband. And I ask that you wear that the following week just to be safe, but just wear a sweatband or a hat to prevent any salty sweat from dripping. Powder brows are so much more durable than microblading because the pigment is going one layer deep. So the pigment's in there. I love being a permanent makeup artist. I feel like it honestly is so rewarding to bring out an inner confidence from someone that hasn't been there and to make their brow dreams come true. So if you are thinking of getting your brows done, 100% look up powder brow artists in your area as well. Look at their work, look at their examples, make sure that it is their examples, not like from a plane. Also baddies, you know that my DMs are always open to any questions you may have. Drop a comment below with any questions you have about microblading and powder brows. I'd be more than happy to help. In today's day and age where brows are so, so, so important, I encourage everyone to get their brows done. Over the course of three years, you spend hundreds of dollars and hundreds of hours doing your makeup. So to think about the fact that you can leave it in an artist's hands, have custom brows that are fit for your face, why the heck not? Invest in yourself. I encourage everyone to invest in yourself. It's going to save you time, money, energy, and it's gonna make you feel confident. So yeah, if you have any questions about anything, microblading, powder brows, permanent makeup, anything in that realm, go ahead and shoot me a DM or drop a question below. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you baddies next time. <sighs>